having much luck, are you? Have a cup of coffee and try again later. Oh, sorry, love, I was just out the back. Look, you go back to bed, I'll answer it. Oh, it might be for me. No, then I'll call you, won't I? Go on. I'll, I'll bring you breakfast in a minute. Hello? Hello? Mr. Spence, could I speak to Diana? Uh, hello? Anybody there? Hello? Who was it, Dad? Just cut out. Oh, must have been a wrong number, eh? Maybe they aren't up yet. Yet they are. Well, he is anyway. Playing hard to get. You can't wear that for work. No, I'm not on till three. Funny, well, am I rushing with this nice shirt? I'm left all the wrinkles in your collar. Didn't ask you to do me ironing, man. Didn't ask you to turn up at the crack of dawn either. What do you expect when your best friends are telling me how Diana walked out on you and how upset you are? And Nicky should have kept the nose out. I came to see if I could help, that's all. I don't want to know any details. That's between you and Diana. Of course, it might be better for you to get the whole thing off your chest. Diana got something wrong, that's all. It's a misunderstanding. But if she is at her father's house, why won't he let you speak to her? Diana's dad hates coppers. His wife ran off with one, you see. Well... He hates the idea of us two getting married. And if he thinks I've upset her, well, that's only gonna make things worse, isn't it? And have you upset her? I have, yeah. My head was full of something else. Something at work. It happened so quick. I never meant to do it, Nan. I don't know. You've been on that poly a few weeks and already you owe over £1,600. It's not as much as that. Yes, it is. By the time you add up all the interest, you've got to pay back. By the time you pay for that keyboard, you could have bought the thing twice over. That music shop must be making a bomb and you're making millionaires out of them credit card people. You shouldn't have bet. I mean, fancy throwing credit cards at teenagers at college. How do they think they're going to pay them back? Well, Mommy, it'll be paid back, OK? Oh, yeah, and I know how, don't I? By robbing Pete to pay Paul. By borrowing even more money. That's what you're going to finish up doing, you know. You're going to get yourself into a spiral of debt and then you'll find yourself in a pit and there'll be nobody there to dig you out. All right, Daddy, you'll pay it back. Well, I hope so, Tony, I hope so. Dad, you know what's coming? No money is going to pay back. Name will affect our prezzies, like. Oh, no problem there, so I'll just give you Mr Rockefeller. I'm sure he'll oblige. Just like I'm sure he'll find himself a flat and pay for it in washes. So we'll to snack by the phone. Go get it for us, will you? Bye, yeah, come get it, all. Maybe once you out the way so we can make some more confessions. You don't bring any debts on us, are you, Michael? You know, when you got that poly, I was proud. But I thought you wanted to go there to work. I thought you wanted a degree. Must have got that wrong, eh? You're all keeping up with your work, aren't you? I mean, doing your essays and stuff. Of course I am, Mum. Oh. That'll rubbish me, whatever, I do. That's why I'm moving out. You know, have a look at this, Mum. I've noted down all the flats here. I'll be late home from poly. I'm going to give them a recce, see what I can afford. Mr. Spence, I'd like to speak to Diana, please. Oh, yes, I'm sure you would. But you've let her down badly, haven't you, lad? I'd like to speak to her, please. Yes, well, she's not here. And even if she was, she wouldn't want to speak to you anyway. So you know we've had some bother, then? Oh, I know, all right. Well, in that case, you must have been in touch with her, so you must know where she is. So, could you please tell me? No. Why not? Because I don't think it's in her best interest, that's why not. If we're getting married in two weeks' time, you know, we've got things to sort out. Yeah, but it can't be sorted, can it? Because you pay with a mismatch from the beginning, and I think it's just as well that she understands that now. I need to see you, Mr. Spence. Oh, just do one, will you, and don't come back. All right, then. At least you'll tell her that I called. I don't think you understand. I love my daughter, and no copper's gonna start messing her around the way I was messed around by my wife's fancy man. I never messed Diana around. Yeah, but you didn't look after her, did you? Not the way I could. You see, I've known about her problem for years. I happen to think there are worse things in the world than not being able to read and write. But I also understand that Diana feels very badly about it. You see, it's sympathy she gets from me. And what do you do, eh? She never gave me a chance. 
She was waiting, wanting to confide, and you called her a stupid mare. I didn't mean it like that. It was wicked. How can you help her with an attitude like that? Look, I never meant it like that, honest. All I want to do now is put things right. I think you should go and think. A copper with an illiterate wife. I don't think that'll work out myself. I've got no problem with it. This one I have. Let's just clear off, will you? And don't come near this house again. Usual moan, milkman late as usual. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> I'm on about access to the shop and access for disabled people, too. Yeah, but you've got a ramp. I haven't got a ramp. Yeah, you have, Ron. It's over there. It's no good to me over there, is it? I need it here leading up to the shop. Anyway, I've just come to tell you. I want the rent money next month. Oh, do you now? Well, we'll just have to see about that, won't we? It's bad enough having to make do with them steps without them being slippery. Well, it's winter. What do you expect, eh? I expect them to be swept and sluiced down. Otherwise, I might just have to withhold the rent. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll get Jimmy the caretaker to sort it out, eh? He can clean them. But before he goes out in your van, eh? He's not out of my van every minute of every day, you know. Look, Barry, I've told you before, haven't I? Those steps are a hazard. They could have a bad effect on trade. And common sense should tell you that if my business goes down, then you don't get your rent, do you? Jimmy! There's no way I'll manage two months' rent in advance. No, forget it. Whatever. Michael, you can change your mind about moving out just because you've had words with your father. Mum, well, he doesn't give me room to breathe. Even at the gig when he found out who sin it was, he just piled in himself. I mean, he's my own dad and he makes me feel small. He makes me feel a failure. Oh, Michael, that's the last thing he'd want. He was made up when you got in at the poly. He's just scared that, well, you'll blow your chance of doing well by well, being distracted by your music and problems with money. Well, he ought to trust me more. He ought to give me some respect. I've never had that off my dad, never. Respect? What, for robbing cars, crashing cars, nearly killing yourself, getting into debt? I mean, grow up and you'll get his respect. And if leaving home helps you grow up, well, then I'm glad you're going, Michael. Come on, Jim. Haven't you loaded up yet? Hey, Rob. Just been looking at your adverts in the window there. Part-time help wanted for the shop. Oh, you want three jobs now, do you? No, it's not for me. It's someone I know. Someone who'd be perfect for it. Jimmy, I think that's for me to say, don't you? Right. Well, I'll send it along, OK? It's not someone from your grubby past, they hope. This person was from the past, but is now from the present, which is where Monk is going to stay. Do you know what you mean by that? I do know what I mean by that, yeah. Wouldn't be some tart, would it, Jim? Hey, 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 hang on, never mind tart. This is my legal wife. Well, we're not together anymore, but she is very respectable, Ron. Her name is Corkill. That's all I need, isn't it? A flaming double act. You and the movie and her in the shop. Oh, come on, Ron, give her a chance, eh? It's not her fault I walked out on her years ago, is it? Oh, marvellous. A lifetime of resentment. You probably end up chucking the stock at one another. Ronnie, she's very responsible. Experienced in shop work. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. And another great asset she has, she's out of work. I may ask just why she's out of work? Uh, just personal reasons, OK? Listen, I'll send her along, right? And if you find you're not impressed, you don't have to give her an interview, do you? I mean, what could be fairer than that? Could I speak to Diana Spence, please? Is she at work today? Well, did she say what was wrong with her? Well, did she say if she'd be in tomorrow, then? Yes. Yes. Right. Thanks. Thanks, love. All right. School Bobby not caught up with you, then? Why? Who's going to tell him? Not me, that's for sure. Look, do you know what you want yet? Cos if you don't, time's money, right? I just want to talk, you know. just want to get to know you, like. Yeah, everyone starts off saying that. This one's a mind to after. I mean, I can give you the good time. Why stop at talk? I said talk, and I mean it. Talk gets you in trouble. 
Don't see that. You always like. And if it's a conversation that you want, you should pick someone who's good at it. Clever like. Not me. Must be good at something. I'm good on these, and I'm good at what blokes pay me for. You know, them things you're saying you don't want. I don't think you do work on the arcades. I bet you're a social worker, eh? I bet you're a school teacher. Well, it doesn't matter what I am, does it? It's my business. Okay. So, uh, what's your name then? Craig. Craig, yeah. Craig, uh, something. Yeah, Craig, something. Let's go spend this. It's not his main presence, but I think he'll like it. Margaret, I think Thomas will like his present. Oh, yeah, he should do. Must make sure I hide it away properly. Is something wrong? You've been yourself for weeks. Is it the long, dark days or the job? No, I'm happy with the job if you are. Oh, we're fine. It's just if someone's gloomy, it does rub off a bit. Sorry, I was meant to upset you on Max. Not Margaret. We'd like to think you could trust us. I mean, that you could confide in us if you felt the need. Is it about your friendship with Dee Dee's brother? Dee Dee talks to me like I'm an idiot, as though I didn't know priests can't have girlfriends. That doesn't mean they can't have friends, though, does it? Derek says I shouldn't go to the church anymore, that people are going to talk. But, I mean, that's their fault, not ours. Priest isn't really his own man. He serves his community. You'll have to take him at his word on that. I don't understand. I can't explain it to you. But he could, and I think he should. It's only fair. Didi says he's married to the church. But, I mean, if two people just get on, like, talking to each other, well, I mean, what's marriage got to do with it? Look, Margaret, why don't I take Thomas today and you go and see Derek, talk things through? You can't, not on your day off. I can do the shopping on Saturday. Go and talk to him, Margaret. But listen to what he has to say. Don't just hear what you want to hear. I wouldn't do that. I let him tell you what it's like for him in his position. And try and find out how he feels about you. Do you think I should? I mean, he might be annoyed at me just turning up again like that at the church. Margaret, you need to talk properly for your own sake. You can't just keep moping around here. <laughs> You know, because of me job and that. But he used to when I was your age. Bad luck, eh? Having to work on Saturdays. Yeah. So, uh, have you always been into football, then? Yeah, always. Always supported Everton. Oh, same here. So, uh, who takes you to match now, then? Oh, I'll just go myself. Or else, you know, fellas like you minted with season tickets. Yeah, uh, I used to go behind the goal. Gladys Street. It's all seated now. Yeah. Hey, I went to a boss match last season. FA Cup against Liverpool. 4-4. Four, 4-4, four. Four, four, yeah. yeah. The best match I went to was years ago. Cup winners' cup against Bayern Munich. Everton won 3-1. Yeah. Did you know who scored the goals? Sharp, Gray, and Stephen. They've all been sold. They've all been sold, yeah. What are you doing? All right, okay, okay, okay. It's all right. Okay. The machine goes flying here. It could bust open, right? You just do what I do. Grab what you can. Just get off now. Someone could get out there. I'd call the busies if I were you, love. We just go outside and watch the fun. Now clear off the lorry. Go on. Or I'll call the manager. You'll be well knackered, then he'll ban the lorry. You okay? You could have got your head kicked in. No, give it harmless. No, I just can't make you out. And well, I'm called Rod. And I'm an Evertonian. I mean, what more do you need to know, eh?
William, you're never here again. I thought the sisters had sorted you out. Um, excuse me, Father Fountain. We're not a bottomless pitch, you know. Father, uh, it's a telephone. Uh, it's the Adoption Society. I'll be right there. You have a visitor. That young lady that was here before, she's not from the panic, she? Uh, no, she isn't. She must be very anxious to see you to make all this journey. But she hasn't come far for her. We're very busy here, you know. We've got all the needs of the parish to see to. Um, I'm sorry. Perhaps I should go. No, no, it's, it's all right, Margaret. You'd do well to give some time to William. He does belong to parish, and his needs are great. All right, William. I, uh... Is uh, something wrong? No, I just wanted to talk to you, that's all. Father Thornton ignored me just now. He acted like I wasn't here. There's no right to be rude to you, even if he is annoyed at you being here. Is he? Mm. Are you? No. Come with me and meet a friend. William, this is a really lovely girl, but the way she talks is very strange. It isn't. She's from Oldham. She's from Tip Moors. There's nowt up there but wind and woolly dogs. Woolly dogs? Sheep. Sheep, William. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you didn't get bored with news agents then? Well, the job's what you make it. I mean, if there was a lull, I found myself something to do. Like, um, reading the magazines? Like filling up the sweets or six, thinking what stock we need to fetch through next. Good girl. I'm not one to stand round idle. Ron? Right then, we'll uh, talk more on Wednesday then, eh, at the interview? Mm. Look forward to it. Yeah. Ta ra. Ta ra. Could you spare me a couple of minutes of your precious time? Sorry, ladies. Have we got any wider salad segments? I've started wrapping the Christmas presents. Yeah, I think I can oblige. What do you think of the shop, then? Well, she's been saying it's very nice. Mm, I think it's been done very well. Hey, I love. That's about the wildest we've got. 99p. You can get your wrapping paper here as well, you know. Yeah, we sell most things. We're open from 9 to 6, and you have to admit, we're very handy. Yeah, it is convenient. A bit more than I can stay for your steps, though. Tom has got a bit of a jolting coming up, though. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, um, could you see Patricia out, please? Help her down the steps with the pram. Schnell. Thanks. Uh, come again, now you've broken your duck. I will. Cheerio. Bye. Bye bye. Hello. Ronnie, more crazy decorations, mate. I have done a bomb this morning. Well done, that man. I've got a box for you in the back. Dee, will you put them adverts up? They've only gone missing lying there. Hey, Ronnie, mate, listen. Listen, mate. Did, uh, did Mrs. Corkill get in touch about? She did, and she gets a proper interview on Wednesday. Brilliant. She'll do you proud, mate. We'll see, Jimmy. We'll see. It all depends on who else applies for the job, you know. The advert's still in the window. I'll kill Tony. He's muddled all these snacks up. Tell you what, then. You get those sorted out, right? And I'll, uh, I'll put these up for Ronnie, eh? Oh, thanks, Jimmy. It's a problem, Tony, after school. If our Jackie's not there, I don't like to leave him in the house by himself. I'm talking about you. Just stand there and help me sort these out, right? Now, just put all the different snacks in the right box. Mummy's had dry spot them steps. We could pop people off if they got prams or push chairs. Oh, Jimmy, will you sweep the steps as well? You what? Hey, don't forget to sweep the steps. All right, you, hey? I've got two jobs here, you know. Hey, I've got two jobs as well. And you're not helping with this one. Yeah, Jimbo, get rid of that little lot. Great. But hey, you better get a move on. You know what these afternoons are like? Dark before you know it. Right, so it's work on the Moby first and the caretaker in second, OK? Correct. Right, I'll see you later. Ta-da. Yeah. Oh. oh, nice to see you working, Jimmy Corkill. Yeah, I'd love you too and all, Julia. On the job that me and Cyril should have had. What can I do you for, Julia? Is your bumper radio times in? You know, the double one with all the Christmas programmes in. Ah, it's far too early for that, love. And anyway, we don't sell newspapers, unfortunately. Hey, we've got a paper here. Ron, phone. Show me together. No, it's all right, love. I'll get it. You serve. This is my personal copy, that, Julia. For when I'm relaxing. Uh, Ron can't relax. That's his problem. Should take things slower. Been overdoing it, has he? I think so. Oh, is that what this is all about, then? Do I need part-time help? No, I want to keep my job on, so I can't work here full-time. Hey, it would suit me, this would. I see now it's virtually promised the Moby. Oh, I'm sure Ron will consider you, Julia. Well, I've got a very good claim with almost being Ron's stepmother. I'll have a word with him. Well, I'll have a word with him. Interviews are Wednesday. I'd need to know paying conditions, of course. Well, sort it out with Ron, Julia. I'd be ideal for this job, you know. Plus the fact that I'm first to apply. I mean, this hasn't even gone up yet. Lord and Bernie now. Well, it wouldn't be lying here if it hadn't, I would it? 
Of course, if this notice was never to go up, if it was to disappear, I'd be the only applicant. And that puts me in a very strong position. I need the help, of course, of a nice, kind boy. Well, what's in it for me? Ooh, I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Well, this is going for a walk. Ooh, I can tell those grandson you are. So I would be proud of you. See you later. I know you said you weren't a social worker, but helping people is part of your work. That old tramp thinks you're brilliant. Well, it's part of my work, yeah. Yeah. I'm not meant to understand the rest. What, are you harking back to what I said at the youth club? You made up those miles and miles between us. Well, I was trying to be honest. Mm. How do you describe music to someone who's deaf? That really hurt me, if you want to know. Well, it was meant to hurt you, in a way, which is what frightens me the most. Because I'm going to hurt you, Margaret, and it's the last thing I want to do. But if you carry on with this... With what? What sort of a setup is it if a friend can't even call around at your house? I mean, it's not as if I'm dragging you out of a service. I'm not stopping you doing your work. Yeah, but you saw Father Thornton's face. He thinks you're chasing me and, and I'm encouraging you. But you could try telling him that you're not. You could try standing up to him. You said he was wrong to ignore me just now. It's not what it looks like to him. I find it hard. It's what it does to me. Because, Margaret, each time that you come here, each time you, you put me through all this, when I became a priest, I took on a vow of celibacy. Now, I have to be true to the vows I made. My honor is bound up in those vows, my integrity. It's hard to explain, but it, it's about the kind of person I want to be, the kind of person I think I am. I don't understand all these vows. I don't see why they're there. If I'm celibate, there's more of me to give to other people. And the one love I do have is a love of God. But if someone loved you, well, well, then you'd be happy and love God more. I mean, how does it hurt your God if someone loves you? It, it hurts me. It, it hurts me if I break my vows. But how can it if you're happy, though? I mean, like, we're happy just, just talking, just being friends. Oh. I mean, what sort of a god is it that, that says you can't be happy and you've got to waste your life? Margaret, there's a bottom line. I chose to be a priest, and I want to carry on being a priest. You want us to be something to each other, something we can't be. It's a dead end. Several women are apologizing for dropping out of loved ones' lives in Forgive or Forget next on Living. the interviews in the shop with the customers coming and going. Well, what do you suggest, then? You're going to be at work, and I'm not closing the shop. Look, half an hour on that. Ron? Michael, you appear to have packed your bag. You haven't even left us an address. Oh, it's all right. I'll get in touch with you. Something you don't want us to know, like. 
You're not moving in with that smackhead Tina, are you? I'm not living with Tina, no. Well, who are you going to be living with? I mean, we don't mean to pry, but you already said yourself you're going to share with someone. I'm sharing with students, mates. Mum, kids coming down later for some stuff to pick up, if that's all right. Well, you still have a load. Maybe you give them a lift, Ron. Mum, I've got a guitar, a bag and a couple of carriers. That's it. Yeah, oh, it's not very much, is it? You just said he was loaded down. Well, have you got some towels and things? And what about your bedding? Dee, Dee, leave him alone, will you? Our Michael knows what he's doing. If he needs something, he can buy it, can't he? He's grown up now. He's got a credit card. Oh, this place, it just brings me down. It's like she's still here, right? Like she's still a living person, but... she just can't talk back to me. Well, you've got to start again, sir. You gotta start building your life. Students, I stay to them. Wish I was a student. Wish I could just pack one bag and get off somewhere where nobody knows me, who I am, what I've done. Oh, Terry, that's why I want you down at your house, fellas. So I can keep an eye on you, make sure you're all right. Why? In case my memory comes back. In case I remember what I did that day. No, so I can watch you back. That's why. What's up? Well, when you get to Polly, have a look in your pocket, but carefully. Don't pull everything out. What for? Well, you might find something in there. That's what's for. Oh, a last minute prezi, eh? No, not that one. The other one. It's not in here. Well, Michael, there must be. Have another look. Uh, would this be what you're looking for? Oh, where'd you find it? On the whole floor. You must have pulled it out rummaging. Well, you didn't tell me it was in there. Well, she couldn't, could she? I was there. It's money. I guessed it was money, Dee. Well, not very much. I should hope not very much. It's towards your end. Towards your first month's advance. Thanks, Mum. How are you? I'd check everywhere. She might have shoved some sarnies in your pockets. Well, I'll put a few in your hold all. Look, Mum, I'll get me dinner at the poly today, same as any other day. Escape, Michael, while you still can, before this woman smothers you. No hard feelings, then? Plenty. But... I suppose you deserve a chance to make even more of a mess of things. Cheers, then. Yeah, ta-da. Will it be our fault if he screws up, Dee? No, do what we can. It's up to him now. Right, well, no more handouts, eh? Cheddar cheese with mayonnaise. I could tell that was going to happen. Didn't have time for breakfast, did I? Been trying to get through to the pharmacy. Then I still hasn't turned in for work. So has the dad still got the key to a chastity belt then? Yeah, the house looked dead this morning, though. Suppose he could have taken her out to her auntie's. Wherever they are, right, Freddie will be doing his best to poison her against me, I'll tell you that. Well, stay cool, stop bombing down so much. I've had things to do, haven't I? Well, I'd delay all wedding plans till you're sure it's still on. Still on, all right. Just need to talk to her, that's all. Listen, um, I heard you clocked in late the other day. Got balled out by Sergeant Williams. Is that for you chasing Diana again? No. Went down the arcade on your way to work. Don't believe it. Listen, Tomo. That kid, Craig, right? It isn't just the odd CDs flogging there, you know. Drugs? Well, it happens even with the kids. Not drugs, no. The kid's selling his body. He's a child prostitute. He can't be more than 14. What the hell? He can't be on his own, either. There's got to be some pimp around somewhere. I've got him in my confidence now, so I've got a chance of getting a name, you know? Are you off your head? All right, and tell the old department. The old department should be told. You should tell Sergeant Williams this could be big. Organised. Craig's been dead cagey, right? The other day, for the first time, he really opened up to me. I mean, he's not a bad kid, Sam Owen. Some scumbag's just using him. This is regional crime squad business. If you go any further, you could be facing a discipline offence. Depends on how much further, doesn't it? We were pulled out of the arcade, but you had to go back in, didn't you? You're part of the police force, Rod. You're told where to go. You don't act all independent. Who do you think you are, Mel Gibson, or what? Look, there's Sergeant Williams now. Go and have a word. Arrange a meeting.
Yeah, but once it goes to the regional crime squad, the investigation grows, doesn't it? Kids like Craig get used as bait. The longer you leave it, Rod, the worse it could get for them. And you're not doing yourself any favours either. Now put a stop to this business before it gets out of hand. You're a policeman, not a social worker. Ah, Derek. Marie McGowan's just rung up. Her father's taken a turn for the worse. Now, can I ask you a favour? Would I take mass? Yes, we'll do a swap. I'll do this evening, right? Fine. This is this something else? Yes, well, I like to find time for a little chat. Over lunch, maybe. What's your problem? Well, if there is, it's one that can be sorted out if only we can talk it through. Lunch time might be difficult. Um, someone's offered us a van for the use of the youth club, and I'm not sure if it's roadworthy, so I'm going to go and have to check it over. Don't worry, I'll find time during the day. These things are best not put off. Just loads of sticker. I had an advert in there for a job last week and it's gone now. Oh, yeah, he's got two applicants lined up, he just told me. Oh, is that for me? Yeah, I said I'd drop it round for him and do a bit of a clean as well. Yeah. I thought I was unlucky, but Mick's had the belly full, hasn't he? First yeah. Josie going and now he's going to have to move out the house. Yeah. Just don't think you're unlucky. Well, no, my life's changed, hasn't it? How's that? Well, something new and exciting's wafted into my life, hasn't it? Wafted me? Yeah, well, you stay the way you are, because I just like it, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. All right, Marcia, I'll see you after. I don't know, you think they have no school to go to, wouldn't you? Well, by the way, Ron, this could be snot, you know. You press the little noses against the panes, and I get extra rates for that. What are the parents thinking, are they? I mean, they must know the bunking off school. Oh, don't be so hard. My education wasn't up to much, and look how I turned out. And the men you saw this young lad talking to, you reckon they were punters? Yeah. No sign of any pimp. Fine. Well, you've told me now. I'll pass it on. Meantime, you don't go near. You were pulled out of that arcade while you were on surveillance. Yeah, I know. Stick to the job you're paid to do. All right. I was thinking, no. Because I've been getting through to this boy. Does he know you're a copper? No. Do you want him to find out? No. Do you want his pimp to find out and give you a good kicking? I've managed to keep me cover till now. More by luck than good management. You've been chancing your arm. I'm surprised at you. We thought you'd turn the corner in this force. How do you mean? You've done much better recently after a rather hairy start. What was it, scrapping with your mate over some girl or other? Well, you see, I was engaged, but it got complicated. Spare me the details. Are you still engaged? Well, yeah, I am. Someone else. We're getting married in two weeks. At least I hope we are. Does she want you to take your sergeant's exams? Well, we haven't really discussed that yet. Or does she want you to do well? Well, sometimes police work worries her, you know, the dangers of the job, like, but... I mean, there has been times when she's wanted me to leave, like... Well, she could be in luck. That could well happen. Bobbies don't act on their own the way you've been doing. You're not stupid. I think it's wrong, that's all, that this could happen to a child, you know? That we could let it happen. Fine, give us the chance to do something about it. Yeah, but it's a warning I'm giving you here. You keep away from that arcade. What do you think I've been saying? I'm just concerned, that's all. What'll happen to the boy? I couldn't say. Forget it. Isn't a wedding enough for you? Is it wrong for a copper to worry what happens to people, then? What happens to lads of 14 years old when they're wrapped up in something like this? I mean, some of them get murdered, don't they? Look, if you really want to help lads like Craig, then you go for an attachment to the vice squad. But if you ignore this warning now, there's no way you're looking at that, and you can forget about becoming a sergeant too. Do you really want to put your job on the line for some kids you hardly know? A child prostitute, one amongst hundreds. <laughs> you know but she's marrying a very rich man and the food at this do will be fab anyway I'm asked to bring a friend a friend yeah well don't be looking at me for that. why not we are still going out together aren't we yeah well there's a difference between going out and going to one of your family's dues you know I can see I might have to twist your arm you twist my arm I don't think so really 
most things I know about you, isn't there? Oh, I like what? Well, uh... Like what, Fran? I know. Like, uh, I slept with Sue. Is that what you mean, Fran? No, of course not. I don't... I'm just... just talking nonsense, really. Yeah, I think you are. Which is why I won't be escorting you to your family's do, all right? Mind you, I'm sure there's a uh, lot of things we could do together. Such as? Well, why don't you come over here and I'll show you. Come on. Sorry to interrupt, love, but another customer's had a fall down the shops. On the steps, as it happens. Was it serious? Well, it could have been. If it had been a pension, it would have been a hospital job. Looks like you've got a visitor, love. Don't go away. Hang on, Mrs. Corkill. Sorry, I know I'm a bit early. It's just it's hard to time the bus. Yeah, look, love, I've just got a bit of business on over there about the shops. OK, I won't be long, but you go in and wait. The door's open, OK? Oh. See you in a minute. Right. Julia Brogan. What a nice surprise. Oh, Jackie Cork, you. I haven't seen you for years. I didn't know you were friendly with the Dixons. I'm not. Not yet. No, I'm here for an interview. Oh, that's interesting. So am I. You wouldn't be for the job in the shop. That's right. Well, that is surprising. I thought I was the only applicant. I've worked in a news agency, see. I've had quite a lot of experience. Oh, what a shame. Ron doesn't sell papers, didn't he tell you? I've been a saleswoman. That's what he's really after. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I worked on the Moby with Cyril. That's Ron's father. Cyril and I were engaged. Well, in one sense, we still are. So, there's a family tie between me and the Dixons. A family tie between us, Julia. It doesn't follow that we love each other. Or that we'll do each other any favours. I mean, from Ron's point of view, if I work in the shop, well, it's keeping it in the family. Do you understand? Oh, yes, I understand. Jimmy works on the Moby now, so Ron could say the same of me. <laughs> Given your husband's history, I think Ron's taken a chance myself. You never liked him, did you? I remember Billy's wedding, his first wedding, of course. I remember your voice ringing round the hall, accusing Jimmy of robbing some saving spoons. Silver saving spoons, and someone pinched them. True, but not my husband. You say I didn't like him much, but you went off him pretty quick once you started living with him. Managers don't always last. Take your Doreen, for instance. Yeah. Take Doreen, my Reenie. Once it was over, that was that. My Reenie would have had too much pride than to come sniffing round again. <laughs> That's not what I heard, Julia. I heard she did exactly that. Well, you heard lies. Spread, no doubt, by that Sheila Grant or that best mate of theirs. You know, the Cathy one. And you know who she was, don't you? Your husband's fancy piece. Well, you certainly haven't changed. A woman with a mouth as foul as yours, and you had the nerve to look down on the Corkills. Right, girls, sorry I was so long. You seem to have got to know each other. We've met before. I'm the mother-in-law. Of my brother-in-law. In other ways. I'm her grandchildren's auntie. Yeah, well, uh, I won't ask you to say that again. <laughs> it's quite simple, really. No, no, it's all right. I believe you. I believe you. Right, um, if you'd like to come through, seeing as how you approach me first. But I was the first to apply for the job. I applied before the advert went up. I saw it on the counter. All right, Julia, you'll get your turn in a minute. Don't worry. Do go on through. Sorry it's got to be the kitchen. It's a bit homely, but oh. still. Home from home. I'm just going to call down the estate agents, see if there's anything that one. Well, they'll probably just say it's the time of the year. Houses don't sell in the winter. Terry, I'm just going down the estate agents, and then I'll be back and I'll take you down to your aunt, fellas. All right? See ya. Hey. Sell. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's a good area. New local shops. And it's a nice house, you know. You've got your garden, the woods at the back. 
New conservatory? Not so much mine. No? Barry bought it, Barry fixed it. I resented him for that, trying to run our lives. Yeah, he's trying to run my life with it and all. I thought. You thought I was just a good time girl who took care not to get hooked, hmm? No, it was just a thought, like, well, I just thought you and him were casual, that's all. I'm sure it is, on Barry's part. Anyway, as long as I've got no illusions. He uses people. I know he's used me in the past, but I'm dependent on him. Doesn't it worry you, Tony, the way he's trying to control everything? I mean, it's not just you, you know, it's me and all. This is the day of my leave, this is. I've been spending it in a garage. He was like that, isn't he? He likes the power over people. That's why he didn't get on with Sue. She could resist him. She was the only one who didn't give in to his charm. Why do you reckon he put you in for this job, in your opinion? Jimmy. Because he wants to get back with me, I suppose. Yeah, but what happens if he's in the shop while I was trying to chat you up? Neglecting my Moby. Not that I'd blame him, like. I'll tell him to get lost. I have done it before, when we first split up and since. I mean, it's been a number of years. Yeah, it amazes me, that does, you know. I mean, to think that you've got a married daughter. What do you mean? Well, I know it sounds like a cliche, but um, you don't look old enough. I married young. Besides, it's how you feel that matters. I mean, you say the shop's too much for you. You can't manage on your own, but you look all right to me. Still got your snap, crackle and pop. Do you think so? <laughs> Try to keep fit, you know. Some fellas have got dead eyes. Burnt out and tired of life. You haven't got dead eyes. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> well, uh, I think that's all I need to know, Mrs Corkill. I'll um, think it over for a couple of days and let you know soon, eh? Thanks. Uh, you don't mind seeing yourself out? No, no, not at all. See you again, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Julia! Now then, Julia. How are we doing, love? I see she's running true to form. Who, oh, Jackie? What form's that? If it's wearing trousers, you put an eyelash at it. Julia, she used her charm. But then I imagine you will too. <laughs> but I don't want to upset you. I just want to discuss it calmly, that's all. I'm sorry, I find that difficult. Why? Is that because I'm hitting home? Making you see feelings that you won't admit to? <laughs> Those feelings just aren't there. Then why are you so angry? <laughs> because you're jumping the gun, that's why. I accept I'm friends with Margaret, and I accept that she may be attracted to me. Oh, and you are not attracted to her, is that it? You've talked to me about falling in love. I'm saying I'm not in that position. Friendship is a different case. But you're playing with fire. Now, do you accept that? So, um, did you come clean with Sergeant Williams? Tell me you went back down the arcade? Yeah, and he said everything you said he would. What, like, keep your nose out? Yeah. Well, that's one problem out the way. It's all sorted then, isn't it? You should have heard him talking about Craig, like it was all his fault. Kids like that would trash anyway. Why get upset about them? No, he didn't say that, Rod. Thing is, the kid's still in there. He's still in danger. What if the regional crime squad get in soon? He's not. Maybe I should tip him off. How? Without giving yourself away? I don't know. I'll find a way. You go back in. You disobey a warning. You make no sense. Unless you're getting off on it or something. You what? That's sick, that is. All right, calm down. I'm just saying, I don't understand why you don't just pack it in, that's all. I strung Craig a line, got to talk to him. And now, maybe because of me, you'll get pulled in, get sent away or put in care or something. I knew it was a mistake from the start. You shouldn't have got involved. Yeah, but I did, though, didn't I? I started it. So I'll have to see it through now. I'm sorry, Tom. I accept it could be tricky, yes. I'm saying I've got it well under control. Oh, I see. Under control, is it? Well, let's look at it another way. You've got a good standing here in the parish. The young people like you, especially the girls. Now, if you're the attraction, if you're the reason why they come to the youth club or even the mass, well, that's all right. That's fine by me. But if news about this one young girl should get out, you'd lose that standing overnight. Ah, oh, well, there we have it, don't we? I mean, that's the real crux of the matter, isn't it? You don't want a scandal in the parish. Go and have your relationship, but make sure no one knows. No, I do not mean that. And yes, this is my parish, and no, I don't want a scandal. But that isn't my only concern. 
I think you're far more involved with this young lady than you'll admit to yourself. And I have seen others in that same situation. I've seen their anguish and their pain. And I don't want you to go through that. I don't see how any good Catholic girl of any sensitivity would want to put you through it either. Margaret's not a Catholic. I don't believe it. Why not? Can't I be friends? Don't be stupid, Derek. How on earth do you expect her to understand? You have given your life to God. Now, what do those words mean to her? She happens to be quite sensitive, as a matter of fact. But she has no sense of our traditions, of your role in them. She can't understand the way I do, the way your friends from college do, Father Morris and Father Dog. Now think how distressed they would be if you were to let them down. This is my business and not theirs. Please don't bring my friends into it because they're quite irrelevant. And your family? Now they are relevant too. Is there no pride there that you're a priest? Eh? Are there no dreams invested in you? Now could you let them down? Could you really hurt them that much? You've done such good work here, Derek. Now, it only takes one parishioner to see you and Margaret together, and the gossip will start. The parish should have you married off in next to no time. Someone will write to the bishop, and the next thing that you know, you'll have been moved for your own good out of the parish altogether. Well, you haven't been to the bishop yourself. No. I haven't. But I would. I would to avoid a scandal. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to see you ruin your life. It's up to you. Up to me to do what? It's up to you to put a stop to this before it all gets out of hand. And before I'm forced to take action. A runaway husband wants to apologize to his wife for cheating on her in Forgive or Forget after the break. We're riding the fridge, have we? Oh, just getting a few things. Nice motor. Mm. Nah, it'll do for now. You're Alice Johnson, aren't you? Yeah. Famous, am I? Ah, oh, well, you could say that. I'll tell you what, the first thing I do when I graduate is get myself a decent motor. Is there a student now? Ah, uh, me and Bugs party company when I was 15. I did my studying on the streets, mate. Ah, uh, well, I wouldn't know about that. Living in a dead sound flat. Laugh and luxury with a couple of blondes. Mm. No wonder you look tired. Tell you what, though, there's a fair bit of talent on this close. Not that you'd be interested, seeing as how you've got your hands full already. Ah, well, I'm doing all right, you know. I don't know, you manage it. I can just about handle one woman, never mind two. Yeah, well, I'll get off anyway. I'll see you. Yeah? Not if I see you first. Spotless. It's nothing to do with me. Rod's got Julia in to do all the cleaning. Where is Rod? Not that I'm bothered, like. I think he had to call in somewhere before he went to work. Missed him then. Never gonna get this mess of a relationship sorted out. What do you do? 
I'm cleaning my stuff, I'm moving out. Permanently? Probably, yeah. Oh. Rob bought me this in all second days. Did all the right things, smiled and said, what a lovely thought. All the time I was terrified in case he asked about the inscription. Never did know what it said. I love your hugs, as long as you can read. <sighs> Come on, Diana, I can't see Rob being bothered about something like this. He's not like that. And neither could I until I told him, when I actually plucked the courage up to tell him. He just got all impatient with me and called me a stupid mare. Where are you going to stay? At my dad's for a while, till I get myself sorted. At least he loves me the way I am. Is that where you've been staying for the past week? At your dad's house? Yeah. Now I get it. Your dad doesn't like busies, does he? What do you mean? Well, it's just... Rod's been round to see you. Nicky, I haven't seen anything of him. He went to the pharmacy as well, but you weren't there either. Well, I'm on sick leave. And he went to your dad's and all. Nicky, I haven't seen him since last Friday. No calls, no visits, nothing. It's as if he's forgotten I exist. Rod said that your dad said you weren't there and that he used to stay well away from you. Rod said that? Yeah. Surely my dad would have told me if he'd called round. He wouldn't lie to me. Would he? Cheer up. Might never happen. Already has. Margaret, and don't forget to pick up Max's paper. Oh, well. OK. I'm your new neighbour. Be moving in soon, so I'll be round for a cup of sugar. Or anything else that's going. Oh, right, of course. Well, um, I'll just let my six-foot, 18-stone champion bodybuilder of a husband know. He can help you carry the cup back. If you don't come out of the house, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll... All right, Simba. Can I help you? Here's Marcia about. She told me she'd be looking after the kids today. I'm sorry, if you want to view the premises, you'll have to get in touch with the estate agent, the number's on the board. And I might just add, I'm not in favour of gazumpers. <laughs> have you flipped it I know it's upset me. You fall in love with a particular place, but I couldn't possibly let you in. Cos I'll only upset you even more, won't Yeah, they? all right, Sim. The Harrisons will be moving in very shortly, so there's no real point, is there? Sorry about the gig the other week. Yeah, well, things seem to be going great. Until your lead singer started doing a Gypsy Rose Lee act. Ah, oh, well, she should be all right from now on. As soon as she's been to the boyfriend. I thought she'd be more of a liability to you, unless you wanted to make it big in the red light district. Oh, but she's got a cracking voice. I mean, you can't just slag it off because of one gig. So, what are you looking for, then? Flat, bed set, cardboard box. Definitely where to get my head down. You've left home, then? Yeah. As from today, I'm homeless. Well, I'd like to help you out, Mike, but... Oh, no, I'm not hinting at anything. It's just, uh, Well, I'm desperate. I'm getting kicked out of the house I'm living in, Pete Harvey. Him and his girlfriend are getting fed up with stepping over me every time you have to go to the bathroom. Well, there must be something, eh? Let's have a look. Yeah, there's one. Calderstone Park. Shared house, 40 quid a week, plus bills. No chance. Well, hold on, here's one, though. That's it, shared kitchen and bathroom off Sefton Park. Sefton Park, eh? Yeah, I like it round there. It's dead bohemian. It suits me aspiring rock star image. Yeah, maybe me luck's changing. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, you're wasting any time on that. It never pays out. It's been me. No way. Yes, thank you. I know every machine in this mm -hmm. place. I can tell you what pays out and what doesn't. Have you got a couple of ten peas? Yeah, yeah. Six 
takes a bit of one, not like. Hey, do you want something there? Sorry, I've just got a lot on my mind. You the talker, are you? Yeah, why? Who wants to know? His mother. Let's put it this way. I know how you like to just talk. You see, Craig gives me the lowdown on all his punters. I keep an eye on him. Make sure there's no weirdos lurking about. Yeah, well, I'm not a weirdo. I'm just not sure you. Are you an arc? Why are you? By squad? Only on weekends and bank holidays. Are you just trying to poach Craig from me? Keep him for yourself? Like I said, you haven't made me mind up yet. Right, then. Either get on with it or go somewhere else. Time's money, as they say. I'll be watching you. I had too much stuff. I've got to leave half of it. Don't worry. I'll have a good route later and see what I can find. <laughs> Why did it have to end like this? Thanks. <laughs> you have to help me, Nikki. I'll have to cancel everything. The reception, the honeymoon, my dress. You should talk to Rod about this, you know. No, I just want to get it over with, get it done with. <laughs> OK. Whatever you want. It's as if he thinks more of the police force than he does about me. Why couldn't he be more like Tomo? Tomo just treats it like a job. We should never tell him. <laughs> Who wants an illiterate wife? Diana, if it bothers you that much, then why don't you do something about it? Go to night classes or something? I'm surprised you haven't done anything about it by now. I seem to manage somehow. At school, my mate Karen Mason, she used to write me homework or for me. And my dad used to do me letters and stuff. And my boss at the pharmacy always let me off from doing the prescriptions. Everyone's always seemed to be so kind. It's never really mattered until now. You know he thinks the world of you. Oh, does he? He hasn't got time for me, Nicky. He's already married to his job. Look, he's going to be home for his dinner soon. Why don't you just wait and see him? What's the point? the point is, this has got nothing to do with me. It's not fair. I'm just a paying tenant, and I'm having to act like some sort of marriage guidance counsellor. At least if you stay, then you can sort this whole mess out between you and leave me out of it. Is that it? It's all I've got. Are you sure you haven't been ploughing my dough into these machines? Unless that's all I've got. Well, you're going to have to try harder then, aren't you? Aren't you? Hello, stranger. Hey, deaf blogs. Penny for him. Oh, sorry, dear, dear, I was miles away. Looks like you've had to give some of the last rites. No, I've just been listening to a confession all morning. Oh, don't remind me. It's years since I've been. I've really got 20 Hail Marys and 10 Our Fathers just been turning up. <laughs> You're not stuck down first, you heathen. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you've come round. I'm going to fill you in all the latest dicks and gossip. Or what? Well, actually, I've come to see Margaret. It's all right. It's just a social call. A social call? There's something wrong with that. Derek, she's a teenage kid with a crush on you, and I thought you'd know better than to go encouraging her. I told you she's a mate, that's all, Dee. It's a lonely life, being a priest. Mates you do make your treasure. You don't push him away. I need to talk to her. Why well, can't you talk to me? I need to talk to her. It's happening again, isn't it? What? Can't you see? It's history repeating itself. You're losing your faith, just like I did mine. Yeah, but you chose to give up your calling. You decided not to become a nun. I mean, the church wasn't right for you. But you chose to see it through. You gave up everything to become a priest. And you know why? Because you really believed then. Your faith's weakening, Derek, if you can't resist the advances of a young girl. Everything will be fine. That's what I said. And I ended up in a psychiatric ward because of all the guilt and the self-recrimination. Oh, and I don't want that to happen to you. Don't worry, dear, it won't. Hello, um, is Margaret in? Uh, no, I'm sorry, she's uh, gone out. Can I come in and wait? It's important. Well, I'm afraid you'll have a long wait. Well, I'll risk it. Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Thanks.
on, Can tell him. I know you got up. Tell him you saw him do it. Go well. on, you divvy. Now I'm going to have to wait till next week to find out what happens. Isn't that just typical of Meadowcroft Park? Do you want another coffee? No, Tom. You don't have to fill me with coffee, you know, to keep me here. I know, yeah. I just thought, well, it'll be a shame if you miss Rod again, seeing as he'll be home for his dinner soon. Yeah. Well, I'll just hang on for a bit longer then, just so we can sort everything out. Which one do you reckon I ought to take on as my assistant, then? I mean, both Jackie and Julia seem all right for the job. Experienced, honest, reliable. Yeah, you might have to employ our Derek instead, the way he's going on. He'll need a job soon. Dee, I'm trying to be serious here, love. Now, do I take the chatty, friendly, mature woman or the younger blonde? Are you fancy calling around to Margaret, knowing full well that she fancies him? Dee Dee. What? Jackie or Julia? Oh, I don't know. Toss a coin or something. Hey, I've never employed anybody before, have I? All this is brand new to me. I'm worrying myself to death about which one to take on. Come here. Let's have a look. Ah, Jackie's on from school early, isn't she? Hey, don't mention Derek to the kids, will you? For God's sake, Dee, what is there to tell? Oh, hiya. Oh, it's good to see you. And where have you been staying? With some mates from the poly. Isn't it funny how you always seem to visit at dinner times? Well, I was just passing, so I thought I'd call round, see how my old folks are getting on without the favourite son. Oh, yeah. It smells nice, that, Mum. Do you want some? Yeah, if you've got enough, yeah. Got enough. You know your mother always makes enough to feed the 5,000. You've been scavenging round the bins, anyway. Huh? Dirty washing. I'm going to the laundrette after. Go oh, the laundrette, eh? Wow, hey. That should be an exciting new experience for you. Well, you're going to waste your money on the laundrette. I'll do it for you. You had no intention of going anywhere near that laundrette, did you? Of course I did. And I'll iron them for you as well. Nice one, though. I'm starving. So, what's it like then, this living away from home? Dead sound. I can do what I want when I want. Not like here. I'm even going to look at my own flat to savvy. Oh, whereabouts? Sefton Park. Dead plush it is. Telly, video, compact disc. Do you know what? I'm really pleased that you've landed on your fees. I am, you know. And it shows all this good living. I expect you're going to be paying for this flat the same way as you did for that keyboard of yours, eh? So, be left home for good, or what? What would you want to come back here for? Oh, I don't know. I must have some advantages, like, uh, cafe or laundrette services. Ron, he said he was just passing me. Leave him alone. Oh, just passing, oh, I see. Well, in that case, you won't be needing your front door keys, will you? Seems like you're not living here anymore, like, so, uh, you might as well give us them now, eh? Ron? Well, you heard him, Dee. He said he wasn't stopping. And if he holds on to them keys, he's going to be coming in here when we're both at work, raiding that fridge or whatever else takes his fancy. And I'm not having you treating this place like a hotel. I was wondering when I was going to get that old line again. Well, now you know, don't you? Give us the keys, Michael. Ron, this is his home. Not anymore, it's not. Keys, Michael. He should be back by now, but he's not, is he? Probably got held up somewhere. It doesn't matter. I think I've waited long enough. Just tell him I came round to cancel all the wedding arrangements. Well, just wait a bit longer, then. And seeing as he wasn't here, that he can do it all by himself. And one of his days off from his precious police work. I was right. It is more important than our wedding. But he'll be back in a minute. Did he hurt you then? No, it's all right. You get used to it. You get. Has he hit you before then? Yeah. Well, sometimes he even gives me a real beating. You know, if they haven't made enough. Fellas like that are just scum. Look, what are you after, eh? You're my mate, aren't you? Oh, I'm dead strange, mate. Get concerned when my mates are getting knocked about, you know? Yeah, well, you know how to stop it then, don't you? Give us some money, because that's the only thing that'll keep Eddie happy. I never don't. Eddie gets to use me as a punch bag. Um. Look, here's my address and phone number, right? Phone me if you really get stuck. Well, I don't usually go to the punter zone. It'll cost you extra. Oh, just promise me, Craig. Yeah, I promise.
you'll be getting busy soon. Sorry? Christmas. Should imagine you'd be fully booked, what with uh, extra masses and carol services. Yes. Well, you could say that, yeah. Yeah, we have to make preparations for the once a year Catholics. That's what I call the ones you only get to see at uh, midnight mass every Christmas Eve. Yes, we're always chocker then. It's uh, full of drunkards who've just been kicked out the pubs. Excitable kids who can't wait to get home to open their presents. Yes, and mothers who are just getting it out of the way so that they can prepare the turkey and trimmings the following morning. Same thing every year. Still, we do all right when the play comes round. Didn't realise priests felt that way. Yes, well, we have feelings just like everyone else. Uh, you'll have to excuse my husband, Father. He's been watching far too many old Bing Crosby movies. Hello, Margaret. Hi, Derek. What are you doing here? I just thought I'd pop round. Um, I, I need to talk to you. Um, is it OK if we go in the garden? <laughs> you don't need to ask, Margaret. Oh, I need Margaret's help. Uh, we're a bit short-staffed at the youth club. That's all I need. Our teenage nanny's got a crush on the local Catholic priest. And to make matters worse, I think he feels the same. All right, so Father Clampett likes Margaret. Doesn't mean anything. Let's face it, it's not going to jeopardise his whole career for a teenage girl now, is he? Hi, hi. Shouldn't you be at school? Got more important things to do with me time. Not getting the roof over me yet. Left home. Well, what's up? Will you have your back? Choking, aren't you? Try to kill myself first. That bad, eh? Worse. Can't you stay with any of your mates? I've been trying to get in touch with Keith for the last half hour. No one's in. I went to see this uh, this bed sit round Sevy Park. Should have seen it, mate. What a dive. Beggars can't be choosers, like, can they? I couldn't even afford it, Sin. I couldn't even afford a dive. I was homeless once. Ended up kipping in the Collins' shed. Well, your shed until it burnt down. Had nothing to eat but tomatoes and cream crackers. I'll tell you what, mate, I wouldn't like to go through that again. Last time I was here, it was a hot summer's day. Yeah, I remember the barbecue. Everyone thought you were my boyfriend. Yeah. The reason I came round, Margaret... It's to do with Father Tom's own tech. No, it isn't. Yeah, doesn't like me, does he? Well, it isn't anything to do with him. But he thinks I'm a bad influence on you. I'm going away, Margaret. I'm going to spend a couple of weeks in Gloucester. I thought you meant forever. I'm going to a retreat. Sounds like some sort of prison. Well, it's somewhere peaceful where I can just think things through. Somewhere quiet where I can just pray and um, recharge my spiritual batteries. But can't you pray here in church? Well, uh, so sometimes you can be a bit too close to a situation. That's why I've just got to get away and, you know, just like Jesus did when he spent 40 days and nights in the wilderness fighting temptation. Is that why you're going? To fight temptation? No, no. Yeah. It's just I've got a lot on my mind, that's all. And you're lying. You're going because of me. I'm not, I'm not. You are, you just won't admit it. They'll turn you away from me, Derek. I know they will. Don't let them do it. Don't let them... We're just friends, Derek. Why can't it stay that way? You can. You know, for a priest, you've really learned to lie well. Oh, what's he... That's it. Go on. Run away from me. See if I care. Going on, oh, Dee Dee. I, I can't stop. I'm in a hurry. I said, "What's going on between you and our Derek?" Nothing. He, he just came to tell me he's going away to a retreat or something. What? Do you not know? No, I didn't. But then I'm only a sister, aren't I? Oh, so nothing's going on, is it? Oh. So why are you crying in the Farnham's garden? I wasn't. Margaret, don't lie to me. I saw you. Look, we're just mates. Mates, don't make me laugh. Margaret, is everything all right? Yeah. 
warned you, didn't I? I said, stay away from him, but you didn't listen. She comes around asking for advice, playing the innocent, when all the time you're planning to just lure my brother away. It's not true. Shall we discuss this inside? I suppose you've known about this all along. About what? About her. Could he be, please? Look, your brother came to visit Margaret, not the other way round. Do you know why? To tell her that he's got to go on a retreat. Oh, you didn't know about it either. Do you know the trouble you're causing? <laughs> Do you? Dee Dee! For heaven's sake, Dee Dee, calm down. I'm sure we can sort this out. It's for years to be a priest. <laughs> years! What if you're after the forbidden fruit? <laughs> In just a moment on Living, celebrity guest Melba Moore wants to apologise to her dad for having made some bad decisions in Forgive or Forget. We should clean up with this lot. <laughs> right, should I make a brew? We've already had one, and I want to get away. It's a busy time for product demonstrators, you know. And hopefully it's a busy time for family business grocers as well, and I still haven't had any breakfast, you know. Well, you shouldn't have come down here at the crack of dawn, should you? Do you know what? I still can't get over the nerve of that Margaret. Every time I think of her, my blood boils. The way she went on about Derek, he could have been a bus driver the way she was going on, let alone a priest. Toast. I think I'd like some toast. Well, are you going to make some? Well, haven't we got an owl toast at home? Yeah, but I don't think it works. Well, I'll nip home and get it. Any idea where it is? Under the sink. How long are you going to be? Five minutes, that's all. Ron, if you'd make a decision, I could be at my proper job. Oh, thanks. This isn't a proper job, like. This is just the family business. Who are you going to choose, Jackie or Julia? This is a momentous decision. Well, now you know the chairman of British Aerospace feels. Yeah, well, I'll give it some more thought, all right. Ron, you can't keep them hanging on. It's not fair. And the sooner you make a decision, the sooner number one slave can be released. Yeah, OK, OK. Morning, Marguerite. Hi, Mr Dixon. this place? 77 pence. Thanks. Dee? Oh, hi, Jimmy. I'm with you in a minute. No, listen, love. I'm not here as a customer. How's the fellow who runs your Melby? I'm here as your caretaker. Oh, what can I do for you? Listen, your power's going off in a minute, OK? Your lights will be OK, cos they're on a different circuit. What's the problem? I don't know. Lucky man's just told me. I'll let you know when they come back on, OK? Lucky we just boiled our kettle, eh? Mm, yeah. Get your priorities right, kid. I'll see you later, gorgeous. See ya. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I haven't seen you all weekend, have I? Well, you could have left me a note. I thought it was a bit too personal for that. What did Diana say exactly, like? you to cancel the wedding. But, I mean, I don't know whether she meant it. You were due home for your dinner. 
and he didn't turn up, so she got tired of waiting and left. She said you think more of your work than you do of her. Where are you working? Well, sort of. But if I'd known she was here, I could have talked to her, sorted things out. Look, Rod, don't start getting on at me. I'm just telling you what happened. Do you know what? I knew her dad was lying. I think she should go round there and see her. Well, of course you should. It's obvious that she... Well, loves you, isn't it? What, did she say that to you? She didn't have to say it. She came round here, didn't she? I'll go and see her. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm not laughing. I just think it's dead romantic, you rushing round to win her back, that's all. I'm going to finish my tea first, like. So the wedding might still be on after all, then? Even if I have to kick the door down and drag her to the church. Right, I'll just try this toaster, then. The brass of that Margaret coming in here like that, I couldn't believe it after all that was said last week. I mean, our Derek isn't far enough away in Gloucestershire to be safe from her. She's just a young girl in love, Dee, isn't she? Everybody's getting this out of proportion. A young girl in love? You make it sound like all sweetness and innocence. Well, that's what it is to her, isn't it, Dee? You can't help who you fall for, you know, love. I mean, look at the look I had. He's a priest. She should know better. Well, why should she if she's not Catholic? Anyway, it's a stupid rule. Ron? Well, it is a stupid rule. Your Derek's a fit young man. Don't tell me it's natural for him to keep away from sex. Oh, don't be talking like that. I've got to have a customer in. Yeah, but we haven't got any customers, have we? What is wrong with this toaster? Anyway, listen, I can't be discussing the theology of the Catholic Church. I've got more important things on my mind, like Julia or Jackie. That is the question. And don't be talking to the kids about it, either. Well, about who we're going to employ, like? <laughs> Derek and that man-mad Margaret. All right. What did she say to you? She wanted a loaf of bread. Is that all this is about? Of course it isn't. It's the nerve of the girl coming in the first place. Dee Dee, this is a shop, isn't it? People coming here to give us money, we should encourage them. We could do without the likes of her. We can't do without the likes of anybody. Anyway, it's none of our business. Your daddy can look after himself. Yeah, but he can't go on a retreat every time she decides to chase after him. She's got to stay away from him. I mean, it's difficult enough as it is without some young floozy chasing after him. Floozy? It's serious, Ron. You can say that again, love. I could end up with one of yesterday's pies here. Hiya. Listen, uh, your power will be back on in five minutes, like your man said, OK? The power's off. I forgot to tell you, with her coming in. But I... We'll pass you and put it back together again. My Jackie wouldn't make a mistake like that. I mean, no offence, Dee Dee, nothing like that, but... Uh, sooner my Jackie starts working in here, Ronnie, the better. How's about it, mate? Give her a ring, will you, Jim, and ask her to come round. Oh, great, when? As soon as possible. So does that mean she's definitely got the job, then? Definitely. Brilliant. Nice one, Ronnie. You'll have to tell Julia. Well, I'll give her a ring, won't I, and ask her to come round. Power's off. We hired this outfit last year. Geoffrey, the vice chairman's always the gnome and the chairman's always Father Christmas. Oh, don't talk to me as if I should know all the round table traditions. It's just our table. Give us twelve. Hmm, perfect. Almost. There. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. What do you think we should do about our current problem? Oh, Margaret. Yes, I mean, I mean, if this is starting to affect her work, and it really must... Ah, really must have a serious talk with her. Yeah, but, um, maybe not with you dressed like that. Yes, obviously. What line should we take with her, then? Oh, I don't know. She's going to have to pull herself together. She was practically brawling in the street with Dee Dee the other day. Do you think we should contact her parents? Well, we can hardly do that every time she becomes infatuated with someone. No, and she can't neglect Thomas every time she falls in love. Why did you have to fall for a Catholic priest? Catholic priest? <laughs> it's worse than that. It's a relative of the Clampets. No, but seriously, what are we going to say to her? Well, we'll wait a day or two to see if she bucks her ideas up now that he's gone away. Oh, she could be worse now that he's gone. Well, you have to feel sorry for her. I mean, you know, I can remember... I can remember being in love. 
And I can remember being in love with you when you were still married to Susanna and how torn apart I was when I wasn't with you. Hmm. No, seriously, there's nothing wrong with being in love so long as it doesn't affect your job. Mm. Hello there. All right. Yeah. What do you think of his outfit? Well, is that not what you wanted him to put on? That's what you left out, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, Thomas, Max. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, would you like three wishes before I turn back into being a chartered surveyor? <laughs> Just wanted to do thanks. Thanks very much. So, when do you want me to start? Well, the thing is, Julia... I can't wait, you know. It'd be a new lease of life for me. There's nothing worse than being alone in the house all day. I mean, I do get out and see people, but it's mainly just Dolly and Polly Sparrow. And their batteries are always flat. I get all shouting at them. So, working here, oh, it'd be great. Ron. Well, look, after, after a lot of thought and that, I just... Don't be worrying about buying stamps for me and things like that. I mean, I'd be quite happy with cash in hand and no paperwork if that suits you. Yeah, well, that's all very well, Julia, but... Don't be worrying about contracts of employment and things like that. I mean, after all, we're almost family. And if you can't trust your own, well, who can you trust, eh? Oh, would you believe it? Just when I thought, that's it, I'm finished. No good to anyone anymore. You come along like a knight in shining armour and rescue me. Ron Dixon, you're a saint. I've got a toast at home I never use. I bring it when I start work. So, it's just a matter of when, really, isn't it? Tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, how's that? Oh, terrific. You won't regret it. <laughs> no, sure I won't. Welcome aboard, Julia. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> see you in the morning, love. Yes, see you, love. Bye. Ta-da. I thought you'd just blown your chance of Manager of the Year award. Do. Tell you I've asked Jackie Corkle to start as soon as possible. Hey, maybe Jimmy hasn't got in touch with her yet, eh? I think I'll nip down, see if I can catch him. Oh. Hello, love. Uh, hello, Dad. Yeah, apart from having more staff than customers like. How's the great wild world treating you then? Fine. You still living at that uh, luxury flat, like? Dad, it's fine, I told you. You're eating, aren't you? Of course I am. I'm paying your debts. No problem. Not bringing any problems home to your mother. That's what mothers are for. Will you leave them alone and go get on with your own problems? I'll be back in five minutes. So, how are you really? Fine. Michael. Hungry. Go and get a sandwich. You might not be living at home, but there's no need to go hungry. And don't tell your dad. He'd like you to go hungry, so you have to come home again. That's good of him, isn't it? No, he's only looking after your own good. He worries about you. And I suppose you're broke. Yeah. There's no need to go hungry. We're not now we've got the shop. The man was supposed to pay it back, like. What do you want a tab? What? A tab. What's stuff on slate? And what do you think I mean? Yeah, I've just made it up, that's all. Yeah, I'll pay it back once a month. Well, that'd give me peace of mind. And where do you say you're living? Uh, Sefton Park. Where, exactly? I don't want to tell you exactly, cos we're still decorating, like. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll invite you round when it's finished, Dom. And what happens if I want to get in contact with you urgently? Well, I'm never going to be that far away for long, am I? Well, I won't press you now, but I will want to know. And you owe me peace of mind, at least. When did you last eat, Margaret? This morning. I'm all right. See you having anything? I did ask. Do you want to talk about it? I'll get it.
Anna. I know you're in there. Open the door. Diana, let me in. Diana, if it takes all day, right, I'll wait. We need to talk. It's only the cold water, Margaret. Thank God it wasn't the pan with the boiling water. Look, Margaret, calm down. Thomas isn't hurt. Just wet, that's all. No thanks to Margaret. I only took me back for a second. It only oh, takes a second, Margaret. Sorry, I'm really sorry. The nanny of all people leaving pan and all sticky. Patricia, out. Margaret obviously didn't do it on purpose. Now, everybody is naturally upset, but Thomas isn't hurt, and that's the main thing, isn't it? Now, let's just put it behind us and make sure that we're all more careful in the future. Okay, what about the future, Margaret? Isn't it about time you got your mind back on your job and forgot this nonsense about a priest? It's not nonsense. Look, I'm sorry about what happened for Thomas, and, and I'll make it up to him. We still want me to work for you, that is. Oh, yeah, of course we do, yeah. Uh, don't we, Patricia? Yes. Sorry for shouting, but it's not nonsense. Yeah, we know it's not, and we do know how you feel, Margaret. don't we? Look, Margaret, why don't you take Thomas, settle yourselves upstairs, eh? You go, Margaret. Yeah, he's a good lad. Good boy. It's all right, baby. What are we going to do with her? Well, we'll just have to be patient, that's all. I mean, she's sensible enough under normal circumstances. We just hope we'll get back to that soon. I mean, what else can we do? Oh, we could try treating her as a nanny, not as a member of the family. Oh, no, we should matter. be treating her as Margaret Clements going through her first real experience of falling in love. And neglecting Thomas. She won't do it again. If Jackie's on her way, you can't really tell her she hasn't got the job now, can you? Yeah, but I can't say she's got it, can I? Why not? Why not? Because we're not making enough money to employ two people. Yeah, but suppose we open late. We might make more than enough. Do you mean till 8 o'clock at night, though? Yeah, 8 or 9. See how it goes. Hey, you might be onto something there. That's a good idea, that. Hey, I'll have to appoint you out of personnel. Mm, thank you very much. Hang on, though. How do you think Jackie and Julie will get on? Oh, I don't know. I think they're related in some roundabout kind of way, aren't they? I suppose they are, yeah. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi, love. Thanks, Ron. Jimmy said you want me to start straight away. Yeah, well, almost, you know. We've just got to sort out who's going to be doing what to start off with. Well, how do you mean? I thought it'd be straightforward nine to five, just you and me. Well, it was, but we've taken on somebody else now. Hey, don't worry. It'll still be more or less the same hours and money, like we said. And you'll get on with the other woman, you know. She's a relation of yours. Julia. Julia Brogan? Yeah. She's not a relation. I thought she was. Well, she's my husband's brother's ex-mother-in-law. Yeah, she's grandmother to Rod and Tracy, and they're your nephew and niece, aren't they? Well, anyway, she's more relation of yours than she is of ours, isn't she? Unless she marries Cyril, and then she's your stepmother. My stepmother was an alien. So what are the working arrangements, then? Right, well, what we're doing, we're thinking about opening eight till nine, so we should have a chat about it when we're all together and work a system out. Do you still want the job? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just it isn't what I expected, that's all. Yeah, well, we should be able to work it out so it suits us all. Julie is dead keen, you know, she'll work any hours. Diana, I love you, and I'm not going away. I'm sorry I wasn't in when you came round, but I'm here now, and that's all that matters. Whatever the problem is, we can work it out. Open the door. Do you know how hard it was to write that? It's what you wrote that's important. It's no good, Rod. I'm useless. I can't read. I can't write. I'll only hold you back. You're the woman I love. You're the woman I'm going to marry. Even if we have to bring the vicar down here and we'll get married through the letterbox. Now open the door before... 
before I use me police training to bust the door down. to do with it. Are you sure? I've never been more sure than anything in my life. We're getting married next week. And everything's gonna be all right. You'll see. I've been looking for you. What are you doing around here? Just messing. Just messing? Why around here? Who do you know that lives here? A mate. I'm your only mate. Don't talk soft. Who is it? It's just a bloke now. You've not been giving it away for nothing, have you, little pillow biter? No, because he's not a perv. Well, the big fella is. And he wants you today. And we have to. He's off his head. But he's loaded. Better than hanging about the streets, ain't it? Nice, big, warm house. He's all right. But he asks for all sorts of funny stuff. Well, have a laugh with him, then. Come on, Craig. We need the cash. You can be in the arcade by four o'clock. This is typical, this is. Well, what's up? You got the job, didn't you? You told me I was the only applicant, that you'd had a word with Ron Dixon and got me sorted out. Yeah, well, I did, didn't I? And did you tell Julia Brogan she was a dead set for the job as well? Of course I didn't. I didn't even know she was in the frame for the job, did I? Listen, you'll be all right. I bet you'll hardly see each other. She'll never be away from the place. You know what she's like. Julia will burn out. She won't last. And then you'll have all the hours that you want, won't you? Hey, it'd be nice being able to see you every day, won't it? What? When we were living together and never saw you. Now you're saying it'd be nice to be able to see me every day. You are amazing. What's wrong with wanting to see you? You left me for that slag out the better shop and now you sound like we're coursing again. Come on, Jackie, give us a chance, will you? Look, I know I'm no saint. No saint? I've learned a lot of lessons yet, and the most important is I was stupid to mess around with anybody when I had you. And you think that's it, do you? You think that by fixing me up with a job and an apology for walking out on us, I'll suddenly say, oh, hey, Jimmy Corkill, you're really an all right sort of bloke. No, no, I'm not expecting that. I'm... Look, all I'm asking for is a second chance, that's all. God almighty. Why does all this sound so familiar? I'm getting off home. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yeah. So, uh, you coming back home with me, or what? Well, I am home, really. Your home is with me. Come back. All right. But I'll have to tell my dad first. How is he? I wouldn't say you're his favourite person at the moment. Do you want me to come back later, when he's in, and have a talk to him? No, leave it as it is. I'll tell him the wedding's definitely off. Absolutely. Definitely. Nothing can go wrong. Hey, you'll be Mrs. Corkle in two weeks' time. Do you promise? To love, honour and obey. And anything else you want me to do, like, you know. Mm, that'll do nicely. <laughs> Happy? Now I'm back with you, I am. I wish every woman could feel the way I do now. <laughs> no, it's all right, Jeffrey. I just needed the trousers taking up, that's all. Listen, uh, how was the uh, Father Christmas outfit? <laughs> well, it's better having it taken in than let out. Yeah. Hmm? No, no, isn't it your turn to come over to us? Well, nonsense, Jeffrey. I mean, Patricia loves you and Lucinda coming over. Yes, all right, well, have a word with her and we'll finalise plans when I see you at work. And don't worry about being a thin Father Christmas. We'll shove a cushion up there. You'll be all right. Yes. Bye-bye. Come on, Max. You know what the shops are like at this time of year? It's a month to Christmas. Exactly, and there's panic on the street, so we'd better get going. And if I find out you've invited the Fletchers to dinner without consulting me first, I'm going to shop till I... No, I haven't made any definite arrangements. I was going to consult mm, you first. Yeah, we'll discuss it on the move. Margaret, we'll be back about tea time. There's some washing through there, if you feel up to it. Yeah, I'm all right. Where is it? By the machine. Right. OK, bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Do you think she'll be all right? I think she's over the worst. Um, hello.
Hello, is, is that St Andrew's Church? A woman wants an apology from the friend who dumped her in Forgive or Forget after the break. Thanks very much. See you again, love. Oh, good morning, Mike. What can I get you? Morning. Mum and Dad not in. Well, your mum's gone to air work and your dad's gone to wholesalers. So, uh, you're minding the shop, then? I'm the manageress. Manageress? Well, when your mum and dad aren't here, I'm sharing the job. Me and that Jackie Corkill. Oh, which one's she? Oh, she's married on and off to that Jimmy Corkill. Do you know, there's no good one amongst them, apart from our Rod and Tracy. So where is she now, then, this Jackie Corkill one? Oh, well, I'm working eight until three, and she's working two till nine, and then next week we swap around. I don't know what your dad was thinking about taking her on in the first place. You can't trust her. Anyway, your dad will be back in about an hour. No, I haven't come to see him. I've just come to get some stuff. Oh. That on my tab, please. You mean put it on the slate? No, oh, whatever. No, it's all right. I've sorted it out with my mum. I've left home, you see. Oh? Where are you living now, then? I'm... Well, I'm just sharing with a mate. Oh, looks as like if you're enjoying yourself. Yeah. Bet you're missing some home comforts, though, aren't you, eh? Your mum's own cooking. No, I like looking after myself. Ah, oh, you can't beat family life, though, can you? A real fire and someone to share your drinking chocolate with at night. Any word from your granddad yet? Er, uh, no, not that I know of. Trust me to fall for a wanderer. That'll be five pounds twenty-eight in total. All right, I'll let her know. I think I should write it down, though. Er, uh, are you and my granddad still engaged, then? You better ask him, man, if he ever turns up. Oh, I'm sure he will. I tell you what, I think you make the perfect couple. Do you think so? Definitely. You want to pin him down, though. Oh, don't think I won't. I come from stock that doesn't give up on a man, and he knows it. The next time he comes home, there'll be a ring on my finger. Just you wait and see. Love's a very powerful emotion. I shall find out one day, Michael. Yeah. Kenny Roberts. Pleased to meet Mr. Roberts. Kenny. Hey, Barry. Is that a uh, Mrs. Roberts, is it? Miss Liverpool. I also have a Miss Derby, Nottingham, Soliol, Ashby de la Zouche in London. Let's have a look at the unit, then. It's over there. How many have you let so far? Uh, just the one. I've got a few other interested parties there, uh, but if you let me know uh, soon, you can have one by the end of the week. Well, we'll have a look. Patricia's looking after Thomas. Why don't you go out, see some friends? Do anything you want. Anything I want.
tough. But you can't always have what you want. What well, he thinks as much of me as I do of him. Has he actually said this to you? Well, he can't, can he? That's why he's had to go away to Gloucester, because he can't admit things to himself or me. I just, I know he does, that's all. Yeah, a Catholic priest is a very well-educated man, has to be strong. He'll have thought long and hard before entering the priesthood. I know that. I'm going out later. Yeah, all right. Oh, um, Susanna Rank. Did she say what you wanted? To talk about Christmas. She says she wants you to ring her to make arrangements to meet and discuss it. Well, it'll have to be round here when Patricia's in. I'm only passing on the message, Max. Yes, I'm sorry. It's just that life never seems to be that straightforward. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Yeah, of course you can. Well, I mean, it's personal and you are my employer. It's your day off. Go ahead. You know, when you were married to Susanna and going out with Patricia, did you ever think that you wouldn't be able to get together properly, you know, get married? Well, first of all, I didn't look to have an affair. I thought I was happy with Susanna. In fact, I was. But then I met Patricia and I realised I was only content with Susanna, but passionate with Patricia. So when did you realise that it was love and not infatuation? Well, after a long time. I fought it, I, I really did. But I couldn't get her out of my head, and all I wanted to do was to be with her. And when you're married with children, it's a terrible thing to happen. Yeah, but at, at the same time, it's a wonderful feeling, and, and you're making out as though it, it wasn't your fault, it was something that happened to you. Yes, I honestly believe that it was something that happened, and not me causing it to happen. I met her and was attracted to her. Now, I know that must happen a lot, but as I came to know her, the attraction grew to love. I was no innocent in it, though. I could have fought it, gone out of my way not to see her. Gone to a retreat like Derek. You're young, Margaret, and I know that's not what you want to hear at the moment, but it might just be that you are pursuing the impossible. You haven't answered my question yet. Did you ever think that you wouldn't be able to marry her? If everybody in the world had told me it was impossible to have Patricia, then it wouldn't have put me off for one second. If we take over one of the shops, it's going to be a great benefit to you. What is, uh, has bait to attract others? Ah, not bait. I get eaten. A lure, an enticement. Hey, uh, you're not looking for a backhander, are you, Kenny? <laughs> Good God, no. Just very favourable terms for our company. Look, I run it with my sister and her husband. We're family. Straight business people who believe in laying their cards on the table. I shouldn't say this, Mr. Roberts. Well, I think you're right. But there again, you're not the only hairdressing chain in this country, are you? Absolutely not. Let me go back and talk to my partners, and if we are interested and can agree terms, I'll come back next week with a potential manager and we can talk some more. Meantime, if you've led all the units, good luck to you. So where to now? Other sites? Not sure. It's either that or back to Miss Liverpool's. Either way, I need to call for some cigarettes. Start the weighing up process, eh? Exactly. This way, sir. Um, how can I help you, sir? Now, that is exactly the style I'd like all of our receptionists to adopt. Oh, <laughs> oh well, one tries. And I thought I'd got Miss Liverpool outside in the car, but she's here. Oh. <laughs> hey, sell ciggies, don't you, Julia? And I just knew you'd have a charming name to go along with your charming personality. Barry, who's your friend? Kenny Roberts, and I'm pleased to meet you, Julia. Hey, can I ask you a personal question? The speed of him? Depends on what it is. Who does your hair? 
Well, normally, my granddaughter, a professional hairdresser. And I know I don't look old enough. Well, that goes without saying, Julia. <laughs> yeah, normally our Tracy does it for me, but she's working away for the moment on a cruise liner. I'm doing very well. Why'd you ask? Oh, well, uh, Kenny's thinking of taking over one of the units, you know, making it into hairdressers, aren't you, Ken? What do you think, Julia? Is this a good location? Oh, yeah. I mean, the nearest one, apart from our Tracy, is about uh, three quarters of a mile away. And your Tracy has a little shop close by, does she? Look, uh, why don't you just get your ciggies and we'll talk about it on the way to the car? Like. She's a proper hairdresser. It's just that she works from home. I'm sure she is. 20 Bensons, please, my love. Oh, with these and don't smoke myself. <laughs> Thanks. It's been nice meeting you. Likewise. Bye, Julia. And your hair's lovely, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There's no one, I'd like to get that tiam of yours, bottle it and then flush it down the nearest bug. <laughs> anyway, it might be interesting doing business with you, or perhaps not. We didn't get big in business just by butchering up old ladies. I'll be in touch. Yeah. See you soon. See ya. Where is she? She's not here, but she's coming back eventually. I know that. What I want to know is why she's coming back here after you've upset her so much. Why don't you just take it easy and I'll explain it all to you. Take it easy? I, I, I could belt you for what you've done to her. And I could arrest you for threatening behaviour. Oh, isn't that just like a copper, eh? Go hide behind your uniform. I'm not wearing a uniform. Look, don't get funny with me, son. You know what I'm talking about. No one is going to mess with my daughter's emotions. I was against her taking up with you in the first place, let alone her moving in here. I told her it had come to this. I told her that you'd let her down. You lied to her about me. You didn't tell her that I called round. Now, I don't care who you are, I'm not arguing with you on my doorstep. If you want to have a sensible conversation, then come in. If not, go home and boil in your own overheated juices. And if you stand there ranting and raving, I might just book you. There's nothing to be said. Then go home, then. We're getting married next week, and that's that. It's going to happen, Mr. Spence. I'm going to be your son-in-law. Now, why don't you come in and we'll talk man to man instead of copper to potential heart attack victim? Both, you know. Next week, eh? Yeah, half two at St John's. Ooh, you try and keep me away. I love a wedding. You two are made for each other, you know. Are you going away? Just for a few days. We were hoping to go away for Christmas. Oh, you're not going away for Christmas, are you? Well, we were thinking. And I was hoping for a traditional family Christmas dinner. I was even hoping that Cyril would be here and we'd all be together. I think at one time we were thinking of having a double wedding. And now it looks as if I'll spend another Christmas alone. And it could be my last, you know. Where are you going? We were wondering about the Lake District. Ah. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire in a little inn somewhere. Warm and snug and the snow outside. And you two wanting nobody else in the world. Yeah. And me probably opening a tin of spam and only the Queen's speech to look forward to. We probably won't be going away every year, and it is source for our honeymoon. I know, love. And it's not as if you're going to get married every year. <laughs> Once will be enough. <laughs> oh, I hope Cyril tears up for the wedding. We'll have a great time. Yeah. I'm so pleased that everything's been sorted out for you, you know. Everything's going to be straightforward from now on. Just you wait and see. Here, yeah, what do you think I should get Patricia for Christmas? I haven't got a clue, apart from the obvious. Oh, tell me the obvious. Chocolates, perfume, jewellery. Oh, <laughs> that obvious. Uh, see you later. Uh, right. Um, you're not going to do anything drastic, are you? Drastic? Well, perhaps that's too strong a word. Um, if, 
No, what I mean is... When I said earlier that I wouldn't have put anything in between Patricia and me being together, I, I hope that hasn't incited you or encouraged you Max, to do it. whatever I do, it's because I've made a decision to do it. I'm just going to go to St Andrew's Church to ask somebody a few questions. Uh, Don't be feeling responsible for me. Oh, it's more than feeling responsible, Margaret. We worry about you as if you're a member of the family. I in fact, you are. Mm, I appreciate that, Max. I'll be back in a couple of hours. I'm not about to go running off to Gloucester, if that's what you're really asking me. Well, it, uh, it did cross my mind. I wouldn't embarrass Derek like that. <sighs> See you later. Yeah, bye-bye. If you want to make her happy, then you should just leave her alone instead of belittling her about her illiteracy. I did not belittle her. I was just so surprised because she manages so well. Yeah, well, she can manage perfectly well without you. She loves me, and I love her. She's a grown woman. You have to let her go. Look, don't you start telling me what I should and shouldn't be doing. She's really very lucky, isn't she? Lucky? Lucky to have two men who love her so much. Unfortunately, one's a dad and one's a future husband. And now you feel because I love her as well. And you should know how I feel and realise that you'd have to let her go eventually. She's not going to find anyone else who thinks more of her and will take as much care of her. Look, she'll make a cup of tea and we'll start again. You really should do something to celebrate, you know. I know. A hen party. Oh. Well, you can't get married without having a hen party. You said yourself it's only once in a lifetime. Oh, I don't know. Oh, go on. Don't be daft. You'll have a great time. Us? Of course, I'll come. Um, let's think who else we can ask. Well, I thought you meant, like, me and my mates. Oh, of course, your mates will come. Now, let's think who else we can ask. Oh, it's a pity our Tracy's still away. Oh, but there's Nicky, and then there's that lovely girl across the road. You know the nanny one? What's her name? Margaret. And Dee Dee Dixon while I'm working for her. Right. That's it, then. When shall we have it? Friday. This Friday? Yeah. This Friday it is. Now, where shall we go? I don't really know. Oh, well, I tell you what, you leave all the arrangements to me. I'll sort that all out. And all you have to worry about is turning up. <sighs> Thanks. You're welcome. You will come to the wedding, won't you? Don't you think that'd be rather hypocritical of me? Well, I think it'd be very hurtful to Diana if you didn't. She thinks the world of you, you know. Do you think I don't know that? I think the world of her, too. That's why I don't like to see her getting hurt. I won't hurt her. She's got it all wrong about the reading and the writing. I'll help her with it. It's not a barrier between us. She knows that now. And if you come to the wedding, then everything's gonna be all right. I suppose I'll have to then, won't I? Oh, great. Do you know what? You'd be made up. So you'll give it away then? Now, if you're looking for Father O'Farrell, he isn't here. He's gone away for a while. Um, actually, it's you I've come to see. Me? Yeah, um, I know I'm not a Catholic. I'm not anything, really. I just wondered if I could have a quick word with you. Well, my housekeeper's expecting me for lunch. Now, can you not come back this afternoon? It won't take long, if you don't mind. Oh, well, all right. As Derek. Father O'Farrell been um, sent away because of our friendship. Father O'Farrell has gone away of his own accord. He hasn't been sent anywhere. Why can't he have a friend who happens to be a woman? Of course he can have a friend, but he has to choose the right friend. You see, he has to be seen to be above temptation. And it's not easy, you know, especially when a young woman throws herself at him. I've never done that. No? I really must be going. Why can't Catholic priests get married? Well, that is a very big question for a man on his way to lunch. Now, shall I give you the short answer, or do you want the whole ecclesiastical debate? Just something I can understand.
Du musst mich da an das Job, sag ich. Looks like you've had a late night or a good party. Yeah. What are you up to then? Tell his hand his dad. Looks like he's selling this place. Hey, I've moved out now, you know. Give him with a couple of mates down Sefton Park. Oh, big lad now, then, eh? Yeah. What do the new neighbours will be then? I don't know. Hope to have more luck than the last tenants, though. Yeah. Hey, what do you reckon will happen to that fellow who put the scaffold with Sue and the kid? I don't know. Makes you wonder about capital punishment and all that, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it might have been an accident. How did he get them up there in the first place? I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Anyway, I'll see you. Hey, which way are you going? Going into town. You couldn't drop us off at four lane ends, could you? Go on, I get in. Hiya. Hey, hey, you wouldn't mind having a crack in here? Hey, do you mind? That's my future stepsister in law, that is. Hey, no offense, like. And will you get your belt on, dickhead? <laughs> Hello, love. Everything all right? Better than all right. Your dad's going to give you away at the wedding. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> I, I, I wish you both the best of luck, and, and I hope you live happily ever after, eh? <laughs> Reminds me of the fairy tales you used to tell me when I was little. Hey, I won't have to do that, will I? Tuck you up in bed and read to you. Well, I'm going to learn to read on my own, aren't I? Certainly are. There's just one thing that worries me, though. There's no problem we can't solve. Oh, your nan. She's organised a hen party for me this coming Friday. She's made a guest list up and everything. Well, that is a problem we can't solve. So, you see, when a man becomes a priest, he dedicates his life to the service of God. Now, in order to do this properly, he needs as few distractions as possible. And the church happens to think that marriage and the family are massive distractions. But for the first thousand years of the church's history, priests could marry. Ah, which book have you been reading? Look, I don't make the rules, young lady. I just live by them, as does Father O'Farrell. But there are some married priests, aren't there? Well, yes, in exceptional circumstances, a married man may become a priest. But a priest may not become a married man and remain in the priesthood because of the vow of celibacy. But why? For reasons I've already explained. Well, vicars get married. Well, you'll have to take that up with the Church of England. And the Greek Orthodox priests get married, don't they? They also wear long beards. Now, I really must be going. Look, can I give you some advice? Now, it's not easy being a priest. Particularly as we have to live more and more in a secular age. There's temptation everywhere. And if you think anything at all about Father O'Farrell, you'll leave him alone and stop pestering him. I'm not pestering him. I'm just asking you questions, that's all. Don't think I don't know why you're here. You're infatuated with him. I'm not infatuated. And you wouldn't be the first woman who's seen a priest as a challenge. I don't see him as a challenge. I don't even see him as a priest. I see him as a, as a man. If you want a man, then find one of your own age who is single and without any complications. I'm not a child, and he is single. He is not single. He is married. He's married to the church, and you can't change that. So will you please think of him as married and out of your reach? <laughs> and another thing. If you don't stop making a nuisance of yourself, Father O'Farrell may be moved. He may be transferred, or he may choose to go away if he's own, for good. Now, just think about that, young lady. a very serious confession to make to her boyfriend next, that she had a termination of her pregnancy and not that she miscarried. Can he possibly forgive or forget? 